So tell us what we're doing in this lab today. So what we're doing is we're measuring single molecules going through a very, very small pore. It's only a few atoms wide in a very thin membrane, which is maybe about 20 atoms thick. That's really small, like single atoms. Single molecules. Molecules, so, molecules, OK. So they're biomolecules ah. in terms of molecules. So they're huge then? Well, they're quite big in terms of molecules. Yeah. But in terms of size, they're obviously very small. You know? Okay. They're in the order of um, a few nanometers in size. Right. And what kind of biomolecules are we talking here? So a number of different biomolecules. So DNA yeah. to calibrate our ah, okay. uh, machine. And then we're measuring proteins. So proteins um, are the building blocks of life, of course, yeah. which are biomolecules. And, um, and the building all... blocks of disease as well the building blocks of disease as well. Yeah. So they have all kinds of functions. If we can identify particular ones in blood, for example, um, they essentially tell you if you know, particular diseases are um, coming on or you know, they tell you about, the health, about health issues. Right. Um, and, and give you a, a, a better way of di diagnosing disease? Well, I mean, there's tons of ways of diagnosing diseases, you know. For, for ex I give you one example, and that's sort of one example we're interested in, is uh, Alzheimer's. It's a very common disease, obviously. Yeah. Now, um, there is some biomarkers for Alzheimer's. For example, one is called uh, light uh, neurofilament chain. Yeah. So you generate more of these proteins, and because it's generated in the brain, only yeah. very few of them get into blood. So normally, when you really uh, diagnose it in terms of biomarkers, you sort of have to go into the spine, Ow. you know, which is very invasive, obviously, yeah. and then you can measure it because there's a sufficient concentration. Now, there's a, a very low concentration in blood, so if you can measure this, with right. a, it's much easier, of course, and it yeah. make it accessible, um, you know, as a screening technique, for example. Right. And easier to access, but harder to do the measurement. Easier to access, harder to do the measurement. So there is some techniques out there which can yeah. measure these low concentrations, but they're awfully complicated and expensive. And what we're working on is using this little machine here, right. which is uh, a quite a simple principle, but obviously the detail is, is complicated. So, um, for example, if we can extract a certain number of proteins from blood, then put it in there and yeah. we can measure this uh, neurofilament light chain and the concentration. This means we could do this test instead of being very invasive, we could do it quickly um, and cheaply. So this is a relatively cheap method. You know, this thing is not very expensive here. It's essentially a very low, right. low current amplifier. Yeah. If it's in your hand, then you can add it to a computer, which, you know, reads out the, the current. So it's very, fairly simple and fairly cheap. So if you can just use blood, you know, do some pre-preparation, yeah. put it in and measure this, this would be would be great. Yeah. So there's obviously two things you need for this. One is that's the small pore. Yep. That so that's effectively make. a filter, right? Yeah, it's a, a membrane with a, with a very small hole in it. And mm -hmm. that's the principle of the measurement. When the So we have this immersed in an electrolyte and, right. you know, we just put on the bias. So we measure an, an electronic current through right. the electrolyte. And when uh -huh. the biomolecule goes through the pore, it blocks the pore. Right. And when it blocks the pore, the current goes down. Yeah. And depending on the size and shape of the molecule, this sort of signature while the current goes down uh, right. is kind of typical for the biomolecule. So it goes down and then out. goes up again? Actually, thing. this is what you see. <laughs> ah, okay. All these dips here, um, obviously you can enlarge them later. Yeah. And these, all these dips is a single molecule going through the pore. Right. Now, is that happening right there? This There's is a lot of biomolecules. So we actually have the world record. <laughs> <laughs> Through one of these pores, we get like two and a half million biomolecules. That's what we've just wow. done. So is that a single hole? That's a single hole. It's one wow. single hole of, in this case, it's about eight nanometers um, in a membrane that's about 10 nanometers thick, down wow. to five nanometers or so, it depends on. Yeah. yeah. So the difficulty with this is, um, that we have to then identify what the molecule is. If we really boil it down to, um, if we sort of extract everything that's 
kind of similar. We, we get like a handful of proteins in the solution, but right. we still need to identify it. And, and this is where then the post-processing comes in. So we use machine learning, we, we train an algorithm to look at this current signature right. for the particular uh, molecule. So is each one of those pulses got a certain shape to it? I mean, what yeah, we're seeing right, is just yeah. a little spike. So it's a little spike, but you, when you enlarge it, it got a certain shape to it. It's biology, you know, so it's, it's not quite as easy as that. So they're yep. not all the same shape. So yep. they, the, like, let's say you have this sort of globular mm. blob going yep. through. It can go through in different ways, yeah, you know, yeah. and it can interact with the pore because they're all charges on the pore surface and on the protein. So there's a number of different uh, ways it can go through. So there's a number of different signals which are, right. you know, belong to one particular protein. But so I guess you just do an isolation of one protein, send it yeah. through and let the, yeah, the machine so, learning yeah, we let them, practice we, on that yeah, one. Yeah, we, we train it on this and then we can, um, yeah, essentially we, we can then de um, pick it out out of a, uh, a mixture of, of very similar proteins. You wow. know, if, they're, if they're different enough, it's, it's yep. easy, but if they're similar, then it, it becomes hard. Yeah. Now, the, um, the, the link here that we might be missing, dear reader, <clears throat> is how do the pores get made? We need a big accelerator like this, right? Okay, so to, there's... To drill a hole. Well, there's different ways of making these pores. So one way of making the pores, which we're currently doing, mm. has nothing to do with the accelerator. Oh. I'm sorry, but <laughs> the accelerator will come in, that's uh, for sure. So the one, the way we're making these pores now is called the electric breakdown. So we apply a large voltage when the membrane is, doesn't have a pore yeah. and then there's uh, some kind of defect accumulation in the membrane and then mm -hmm. it breaks through and this is a very reproducible membrane so we can make very small pores. Right. Now the advantage is it's a very easy technique mm. um, and you can make you know, very reproducible pores of very small dimensions. Now you think why, why do we need the accelerator? So one of the big problems with um, this kind of, we call it a solid state nanopore technology, is that um, these biomolecules, these proteins, go through very fast. Mm. So when they go through very fast, obviously we need uh, a high temporal resolution of our current signature yeah, that yeah, goes yeah. through. So we can do that to some extent, yeah. um, but this is only limited. So what we really want is slow down the molecule. Right. And one solution is making conical pores. Ah, so you clear. have, if you make a conical pore, you have a yep. thin pore, but you have all these charge on the cone surface that yep. should slow down the molecule. And that's where we use the accelerator. Ah, right. We put an ion through this membrane. Yeah. And this ion, this high energetic ion, where we need these large energies that the 14UD generates, this uh, generates a very narrow damage track. It's only a few nanometers wide. Then we just put it into a chemical etchant. Um, in this case, when we use, for example, SiO2, we put it in HF. Right. So this damage track, which is a really nice narrow cylinder, um, that etches faster than the undamaged material. Yeah. So if we etch it from one side, this etches faster, the undamaged material etches slower, which leads okay. to the formation of right. a conical pore. Yeah. And we have um, means, so if we change, for example, the iron energy or we change the etching conditions, we can tune the angle of this uh, conical right. pore. Okay. Or we can also actually, um, more than that, we can actually change the shape too. So we can make conical pores or we can make funnel shaped pores and all kinds of different geometries. We can make double conical pores. Oh, wow. The novelty that we're doing is making it in a, in a very thin membrane out of silicon dioxide or silicon yeah. nitride. I mean, the etching in these materials was known, so that's not mm -hmm. new, but you know, using it in a membrane and then the engineering these pores, yeah. that's sort of the novel the novelty that right. we've combining we've been a doing. bunch of things that existed together combining a bunch of things that existed um, which you know sounds simple but you know it's things are never simple yeah <laughs> <laughs> otherwise someone would have done it yeah yeah we're actually at a point now where we can make them reproducibly yeah 
So we, we just had the breakthrough where we have demonstrated that the machine learning can actually distinguish between very similar proteins. So right. that paper is coming out soon. So the next step is then to you know, look into these particular biomarkers yeah. for Alzheimer's, for example. We have measured them yeah. in isolation. But now, of course, we need to measure them in a solution in of different in soup in a solution of different proteins. <laughs> yeah. And the second point is that this has been demonstrated with these very thin pores. Yeah. So now we need to integrate the accelerator-made pores yeah. into this system, so we can also slow them down, and then right. you know we get a, a better resolution. So these are the next challenges. Then they are they are not. Again, they're not easy challenges, but we are confident yeah. we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Great then, stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll let you get on with it. Okay. Cool. Thanks.